As 2023 comes to a close, everyone is wondering what the next year has in store for crypto, arguably more so than in previous years. That's simply because the last 12 months have been nothing short of historic, and we get the impression that the next 12 months could be just as intense. That's why today we're going to give you 10 predictions on what will happen in crypto in 2024, and we may throw in a special bonus prediction and giveaway just for our fans. So stay tuned to find out. I'll start, of course, by saying that nothing in this video is financial advice. It's purely educational content that's meant to assist you on your crypto quest. Also note that I and the Coin Bureau team hold a few of the cryptos we'll be discussing in today's video. We'll make sure to point those out as we go along. Note that you can find out where to find our full crypto portfolios at the end of the video. That said, our first prediction is a pretty obvious one. A spot Bitcoin ETF will be approved in 2024. As most of you will know, Bloomberg ETF analysts believe there is a 90% chance that this approval will occur in early January, specifically between Friday the 5th of January and Wednesday the 10th of January. And if the approval doesn't happen in early January, then it could come later in the month. That's because the SEC is due to make multiple decisions about the spot Bitcoin ETF applications by the end of the month. As you can hopefully see, most of these decisions are expected to be made in mid-January. If the SEC delays all spot Bitcoin ETF applications in January, then the next and final approval window will be in mid-March. This is when the SEC will have to either approve or reject all spot Bitcoin ETF applications. It will not be able to delay these applications again, as per the SEC's own rules. Now, given that the SEC has only ever rejected one of BlackRock's ETF applications, it's believed that it's not a question of if, but when its spot Bitcoin ETF application will get the thumbs up. If the SEC somehow decides to reject BlackRock and the others, JP Morgan has warned that these asset managers will take the SEC to court. Now, obviously, a rejection of all the spot Bitcoin ETF applications would cause BTC's price to plummet, along with the rest of the crypto market. What's not so obvious, however, is that the crypto market could also see a pullback if we see another delay in early January, given the strong consensus of an approval. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to smash that like button to give it a boost. Now, this ties into our second prediction, and that's that BTC will hit a new all-time high in 2024. We believe that this will happen regardless of whether a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved or not. That's simply because BTC has a history of surpassing its previous all-time high roughly one year before its cycle high. In late 2016, BTC surpassed its 2013 cycle high of around $1,000. In late 2017, BTC hit a new cycle high of almost $20,000. In late 2020, BTC surpassed its 2017 high and in late 2021, BTC hit a cycle high of almost $70,000. It appears that 2024 will be analogous to 2016 and 2020. In practical terms, this means that BTC could hit a high of more than $80,000 by the end of 2024. It's hard to say exactly what this price will be, but history suggests that it won't be much higher than the previous cycle high. As a result, a BTC price of 80 k would be a conservative expectation. If this does indeed play out, then it foreshadows a cycle high for BTC sometime in late 2025. If you watched our video about when the crypto bear market will end, you'll know that we believe that BTC will hit a high of between 130 and 180k. This is likewise based on BTC's previous cycles, which have seen diminishing returns. Now, in theory, BTC could go much higher in 2024 if a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved, which I'll reiterate is extremely likely. In practice, however, a spot Bitcoin ETF does not guarantee inflows. If you watched our recent video about the post-ETF BTC price, you'll know these inflows won't come at once either. And this will ultimately depend on two things, how institutional investors see BTC and what the macro conditions are looking like at the time. For context, 
it appears that most institutional investors still see BTC as a risk asset. If this is indeed the case, then risk-off macro conditions could dampen the ETF flows. Conversely, however, if it turns out that lots of institutional investors see BTC as a safe haven, then ETF flows could be high regardless of the macro conditions. Based on Larry Fink's comments about BlackRock seeing BTC as, quote, digital gold, it's safe to assume that at least a few institutional investors feel this way. Hold up a second there, Guy. Sorry to interrupt, folks, but I just wanted to very quickly tell you about the Coin Bureau deals page. Now, this is the place where we have put together some of the very best deals and promos in all of crypto. So you can think things like exchange sign-up bonuses, trading fee discounts, and money off of hardware wallets, and much, much more besides. So if you want to check that out, coinbureau.com forward slash deals is the place to go, or you can just use the link in the description of this video down below. Thanks very much. And now back to you, Guy. This begs the question of how the Bitcoin halving could affect BTC's price, which is our third prediction. The Bitcoin halving will have next to no immediate effect on BTC's price. For reference, it's believed that the halving causes BTC's price to increase because of the reduced supply coming onto the market. As basic economics dictates, if you reduce supply while demand stays the same or increases, then prices should rise. Naturally, many have argued that the additional supply squeeze brought on by the halving should push BTC higher. And to be fair, there is some historical evidence for this. During the halving in 2016, BTC's price almost doubled over the course of a couple of months, consistent with the supply-demand economics. During the halving in 2020, however, BTC's price barely budged in the days that followed. Some would argue that this is because investors were distracted by other factors, such as the pandemic. But we would argue that this was probably because the BTC halving had mostly been priced in, much like the spot Bitcoin ETF approval. In plain English, everyone already knows that the halving is coming. It's literally programmed into Bitcoin's code. As a result, most of the price action related to the halving will probably happen before. Today, there are a lot of institutional investors involved in the crypto market, and there will be more of them when the spot Bitcoin ETF is approved. These investors are likely pricing in the halving already, though it's admittedly hard to know for sure, given that the halving occurs around the final ETF deadline. Regardless, our base case is that the Bitcoin halving will have no immediate impact on BTC's price. If anything, there's a small risk that it could cause BTC's price to fall right after the halving. That's because a decrease in block rewards could cause some Bitcoin miners to go out of business and sell their BTC. Food for thought. Anyways, our fourth prediction pertains to something we talked about in a recent video, and that's that we'll see the first narrative of the next crypto bull market in 2024. To refresh your memory, the first narrative of the previous crypto bull market was DeFi, with DeFi summer in the summer of 2020. This period was marked by DeFi protocols offering insane yields on lending and borrowing crypto by airdropping their tokens to people using their protocols. This was to the point that you could make money borrowing. The farming yields were higher than the interest rate on the borrowed crypto. What this fundamentally did was encourage crypto investors to go further down the risk curve. In other words, it motivated them to move their money from large cap altcoins that they were familiar with, like BTC and ETH, into smaller cap altcoins. The result was that these altcoins rallied like crazy. Now, we believe that the emergence of some crypto narrative is required to unleash the irrational speculation that's characteristic of a full-blown crypto bull market. Put differently, there needs to be something that tempts those sitting on large BTC and ETH profits to start investing in other cryptos. If you watched our recent video about crypto narratives, we believe that the narrative that unleashes this speculation will either be related to decentralized social media, GameFi, or AI. We lean towards the first one, mainly because there's been so much censorship of centralized social media in recent years. This censorship is likely to go into overdrive next year due to all the pivotal elections taking place around the world, most notably in the United States. This could motivate the average person to look for decentralized alternatives where they can actually criticize the people in power 
without being banned. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Anyhow, our fifth prediction follows from the fourth, and that's that Ethereum's Layer 2s will see serious adoption in 2024, potentially to the point that they begin challenging other Layer 1s. If you watched our recent Ethereum update, you'll know this mainly has to do with the Denkun upgrade. To bring you up to speed, Ethereum will be undergoing an upgrade in January called Denkun. This upgrade will significantly increase the scalability, aka speed, of Ethereum's Layer 2s, while further lowering their already low transaction costs. This will put these Layer 2s on a par with some of the fastest Layer 1s. As some of you will know, a lot of the other Layer 1 cryptocurrencies in the smart contract crypto niche leverage the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM, for smart contracts. This has had the practical effect of turning these Layer 1s into de facto Layer 2s on Ethereum, just on separate blockchains. More importantly, this has had the effect of taking away from Ethereum's market share and ETH's market cap by extension. Take a second to consider that if it weren't for all the other Layer 1 EVM chains, ETH likely would have gone a lot higher during the previous bull market. After the Denkun upgrade, we believe that Ethereum's Layer 2s will take back most of this EVM market share from the other EVM-based Layer 1s. If this does indeed happen, then you can bet that tokens belonging to Ethereum Layer 2s will rally a lot, and it's likely that ETH itself will perform very well too. This is all but guaranteed if the spot Ethereum ETFs are approved, something which has been forgotten by most investors. Whereas the Denkun upgrade will take market share from other EVM-based Layer 1s, the Spot Ethereum ETFs could take market share away from the other Layer 1s simply because they don't have ETFs. Definitely something to keep in mind. And note that some of us hold ETH in our personal portfolios. Anywho, our sixth prediction also has to do with Ethereum, and that's that stablecoins will start to be used for payments around the world in 2024. Mainly, non-USD stablecoins. For those unfamiliar, most stablecoins in circulation exist on Ethereum, and its Layer 2s will be ready for payments after Denkun. This is more significant than you might think, because payments are the killer use case that crypto has been promising to deliver since it became a thing. Of course, some cryptos are being used for payments already, but we have yet to see mass adoption of crypto payments, even stablecoin payments. Now, this is partially due to the fact that crypto blockchains weren't fast or cheap enough to make them viable alternatives to existing payment rails, but it's primarily due to the absence of stablecoin regulations. Over the last year or so, we've seen lots of stablecoin regulations passed, which will make payments possible. The catch is that most of these stablecoin regulations restrict the use of USD stablecoins. The EU's Markets in Crypto Assets, or MICA, is a perfect example. It makes it practically impossible to use USD stablecoins on the continent, but leaves the door wide open to all sorts of Euro stablecoin use cases. As you might have guessed, the scrutiny of USD stablecoins in the EU and elsewhere is due to concerns that these USD stablecoins could compete with local domestic currencies. Note that this has been openly admitted by European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde, and it's why they're creating a digital euro CBDC. More about that in the description. I digress. Now, what's interesting is that stablecoins are backed by government debt. What this means is that when you buy a stablecoin, you are literally subsidizing the government spending behind the scenes. This makes stablecoins a powerful tool for governments, particularly in the EU, where debt types vary. This creates a huge incentive for governments, such as those in the EU, to allow and even encourage stablecoin payments in their national currencies. And the fact that interest rates are above zero in most countries finally makes it economically viable to create non-USD stablecoins. In the end, this will benefit cryptocurrencies that are ideal for stablecoin payments, such as Ethereum's Layer 2s and Fast Layer 1s, like Solana. Note that some of us, including myself, hold soul in our crypto portfolios too. And speaking of governments, our seventh prediction is that some of them will start using BTC for international trade in 2024, 
especially those that have been sanctioned by the United States. Now, it's possible that this prediction has already come true, given that Iran reportedly started using crypto for trade in 2022. The catch is that Iran never confirmed which crypto it was using for trade. Although Russia announced its intentions to use BTC for international trade earlier this year, we've yet to see any governments officially start using BTC for trade just yet. We believe this will happen in 2024. Now, at first glance, this isn't exactly a positive development. After all, nobody likes bad actors using BTC. Upon closer inspection, however, you realize that this is a necessary stage of BTC's nation-state adoption curve. The same thing happened at the individual level when BTC first began. The first people to use BTC were likewise what you might call bad actors, but this proved that it was in fact possible to use BTC for things like payments. As BTC's adoption increased, these so-called bad actors became a smaller and smaller percentage of BTC users. Today, fiat is used more for illicit finance than BTC in percentage terms. We believe that we will see the same phenomenon at the national level. First, it will be sanctioned states like Iran and Russia using BTC for international trade. This will prove that it is, in fact, possible to use BTC for international trade, which will eventually result in other countries using BTC for payments too. Now, if you've watched any of our videos about CBDCs, we believe there is a real chance that BTC will become a popular option for international trade. This is simply because countries will want to use a digital currency they know is credibly neutral, a digital currency that can't be seized or frozen like a CBDC. We believe that next year will be pivotal for BTC's nation-state adoption and its journey to becoming potentially the world's next reserve currency. Now, this sounds crazy until you remember that central banks will be allowed to hold crypto on their balance sheets starting in 2025. More about that in the description. And on that note, our eighth prediction is that it will become common for publicly traded companies to hold BTC on their balance sheets in 2024. Some of you might recall that MicroStrategy adding BTC to its balance sheet in the summer of 2020 was one of the catalysts that contributed to the crypto bull market. We believe that we will see the same catalyst occur in 2024, but bigger. Besides the fact that an ETF will make it easier for publicly traded companies to access BTC, recent changes to rules related to crypto accounting in the US will reportedly make it more appealing for publicly traded companies to hold BTC. Basically, it's now possible for publicly traded companies to report the unrealized gains on their crypto holdings. Prior to the rule change, they were only able to report the gains if they sold their crypto holdings. Oddly enough, they were also able to report their unrealized losses. In any case, once we see more publicly traded companies adding BTC to their balance sheets, it will likely result in the same kind of FOMO we're seeing at the retail and institutional investor level. Similarly to the effects of a spot Bitcoin ETF approval, though, this will likely depend on how these companies see BTC. If they see BTC as a means of hedging their currency risk, that is, protecting against inflation, then it could become a popular asset to accumulate, and they could accumulate a lot of it. Alternatively, if they see BTC as more of a risk asset, then BTC may not see much accumulation from these entities. To put things into perspective, 13 publicly traded big tech companies are holding over $1 trillion in cold, hard cash. As many people have pointed out, just a fraction of this amount of money flowing into BTC would result in astronomical gains. Never mind the tens of trillions held by TradFi investors. Now, our ninth prediction has to do with a crypto company that was once loved by TradFi. We believe that FTX will be restarted in 2024 and could become a top competitor to other exchanges. In case you missed the memo, plans to restart FTX are already in the works and could happen as soon as Q2 2024. This makes sense when you realize that the FTX platform itself wasn't bad. Those of you who used it 
will know that it was surprisingly user-friendly and also offered a lot of innovative products. While the management of FTX was rotten to the core, the exchange itself did in fact have potential. It seems that the only thing standing in the way of an FTX restart is the IRS, which is demanding a whopping $24 billion in unpaid taxes from the bankruptcy estate. If the IRS manages to get this money, which rightfully belongs to FTX creditors, then it could call the restart into question. Then again, it's possible that the FTX restart is completely unrelated to the IRS's claims. And chances are that we'll find out by the time this video goes live. The FTX bankruptcy estate will reportedly make a final decision on whether to restart the exchange by selling it to an investor by the end of December. Now, our 10th prediction is that pro-crypto politicians will be elected around the world in 2024. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this prediction is exclusive to the US. However, there will be dozens of major elections in 2024 in North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and even Oceania. Believe it or not, crypto policy could play a pivotal role in these elections. In addition to all the lobbying that's likely being done by pro-crypto interests, crypto has become a political issue in many countries. This appears to be because of central bank digital currencies and the push for cashless societies. More about all of that in the description. Now, people around the world are starting to wake up to the fact that their governments want to roll out dystopian digital currencies that will make it possible to control how much you can save and how you can spend. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's in almost every report about CBDCs published by central banks. The unprecedented response to the pandemic has given people a sense of what governments are willing to do to their populations. The prospect of governments having total control over currency is flat out terrifying given this recent history, and it's something that people are pushing back against everywhere. In stark contrast to CBDCs, cryptocurrencies are designed from the ground up for financial freedom. That is, the ability to spend your money how you want, when you want, and whenever you want. In a financial world where these freedoms are being slowly taken away, crypto is becoming increasingly popular. This is most definitely good news, but we must make sure that the crypto that's being adopted is truly decentralized. Otherwise, we could end up with systems that are analogous to CBDCs. The bad news is that much of the crypto industry is headed in that direction. Thankfully, some of it is still focused on decentralization. From our perspective, education is the solution to crypto's centralization issues. And this brings me to our bonus prediction, and that's that the Coin Bureau Club will hit 10,000 members in 2024. If you haven't heard, we recently launched a subscription service called the Coin Bureau Club, where we provide actionable crypto alpha and review up and coming small cap altcoins. Not only that, but we allow our members to vote on the altcoins we cover, show them the cryptos in the portfolios of all Coin Bureau researchers, as well as the cryptos we're watching, offer them exclusive deals on crypto products and services, monthly giveaways, occasional AMAs, and discuss the markets in an exclusive Discord channel. So, if this sounds interesting, then consider becoming a member of the Coin Bureau Club using the link in the description. I'll quickly note that we'll be increasing our prices on the 15th of January. That's because not only are we constantly adding new features, but we're also going to be running a Coin Bureau Club giveaway. That's right, one lucky CBC subscriber will win an all-expenses-paid trip to Dubai during Token 2049 next year. This will include flights, accommodation, spending money, and Token 2049 tickets. On top of this, you'll be visiting Coin Bureau HQ to see the team and ask all your crypto-related questions. And finally, the winner will have lunch with Jessica and myself at one of the best restaurants in Dubai. So, that's even more reason to take advantage of our limited introductory price offer. The clock is ticking. So, use that link down below to sign up today. And giveaways aside, the goal of the Coin Bureau Club is to create even more high-quality crypto content across all our channels. Because we believe there is still a serious shortage of quality crypto content out there. So, with your support, 
we can make more of it. And on behalf of the Coin Bureau, I want to thank everyone who's supported us so far. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the new year. So, this is Guy, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.